Do you want to understand what ChatGPT is and what it can do for language teachers and language students? If that's so, this is the video for you. It is no doubt one of the most frightening and one of the most powerful technologies I've ever seen and the consequences of this technology in terms of many areas of language teaching I'm yet to understand. I've been working with this technology now for about 10 days. I've already started using it in particularly in my learning of Polish. Some of the things that I've managed to do are absolutely incredible, but also really frightening. If you don't know what this technology is about, please, please watch this video. It's so powerful that it's often difficult to actually explain what it can do. Basically, you can talk with it and tell it to do anything for you, to create dialogues for you, to create texts for you, to create exercises for you, to produce grammar um, translations for you, to have a conversation with you. It will literally do everything you ask it as long as you give it very clear instructions. It seems to work in lots of languages. I've been working with it mainly in Spanish, English, Polish and a little bit in French but I've been watching lots of webinars and debates on the internet and I've seen activities done for example in German. It does an incredible job of, trans uh, job of translating. The texts are incredibly natural and it will produce a text for example if you ask it say write the biography of Winston Churchill at level A2 for students of English. It will produce a biography and you can even tell it how many words you want. What you can do with this technology is really it takes many hours of you giving it instructions and watching what uh, comes back. I'm going to take you through some of the examples that I've already been working with, things that I've done, and I'm going to suggest you some activities and ideas that you could do with this technology. It can save you masses of time. If you're a language teacher, in fact, if you're a teacher of anything, this is going to be revealing, but particularly for language teachers and particularly for language students, I'm not going to comment on the negative aspects. There are many. I've been watching all of the doomsday scenario videos on YouTube. I am worried as well as being fascinated by this technology and I really hope you like this video. Let's get started. As always, please, if you like it, please like the video. Please share this video with other teachers. Please comment on some of the ideas that I'm suggesting and of course join me on my YouTube channel. Please make use of the menu system if you want to jump to other parts of the video. So in my first example, I'm going to ask ChatGPT to write me a 400 word article about the life of Selena Gomez. She's a very popular contemporary singer. I'm also going to ask it to produce 10 comprehension questions um, that it can produce for me, plus the answers. And I'm going to ask it to do this at B1 level because I want to produce this for some of my language students. So let's just see what it does. Let's first of all write the instructions in. Okay, so we've put in here, can you write 400 word article about the life of singer Selena Gomez? I want the level to be B1, English students, okay? Uh, I want there to have eight comprehension questions to go along with the article plus the answers. Uh, let's see how easy it does that for me. And off it goes, it starts to write the whole piece and it will also generate the questions. Now, I'm just gonna come back now when the questions are generated. As you can see now, it's come to the end of writing the text and it's beginning to write in the comprehension questions. I was following the text as it was writing it. It was absolutely brilliant. It was talking about her career, talking about her, how she deals with problems of mental health, how she actually began in the music industry, um, the award she's won. Um, and it's just doing the whole thing for me. I'm not absolutely doing any of that. It's just, and I only asked for eight questions in the end, not 10. So there we are, we've got our eight questions all done for me. And, uh, and also nicely at the right level as well, because I only asked it to be a kind of B1 level. And I can notice that that's, that uh, compared to some of the other essays I've asked it to write, it's made this a lot easier to read. So excellent start from this system. One of the most incredible things about this technology and something that I've been doing a lot with it in Polish, but I'm going to show you some examples in English, is that you can tell it to, for example, 
produce a dialogue or produce a text at a certain level using certain words. So for example, let's imagine that there are 10 words that you want to practice and you want to use those words in context. You give it the words that you want it to use and it will produce a story for you. You can even tell it what type of story you want, whether you want it on a certain topic or in a certain country or a certain context. You can even tell it the style if you want it to be formal or informal. And you can also tell it the level. So I've been using this a lot to write stories for me in Polish, practicing the vocabulary that I want to learn and normally working between level A2 and B1. It is fantastic. It's done a great job. My wife has been checking what it's been producing and saying to me that the stories are great and that they're perfect grammatically and very natural sounding. Let me show you some examples. So I've already been doing this in Polish quite a lot. I've asked it to write stories for me and use certain vocabulary that I want to practice. So perhaps some of the vocabulary that I'm having difficulty with. And so what I've done here, I've just done an example in English. Write a story about moving to Spain and working as an English teacher. Can you include the following words? Accommodation, missing home, public transport, unemployment, job interview, success, promotion, future prospects. Now, it's done a great job of writing that story. And I can see it here and I've already read it. It's absolutely perfect. It's about uh, Sophie who moves to Madrid and ends up getting a good job and has good future prospects in Spain and is excited about the le learning the language, etc. Okay. So it literally just produced that story for me. Okay, now one thing I could do with that story is I, if I wanted to hear that story, the audio, is I could just simply now copy that story. And this is something I've already been doing in Polish. Um, so I'm going to copy that story. I'm going to jump over to Google Translate and I'll just click on, come to the top here. I'm just going to make sure I've got it set to English. I'm going to paste in that story is actually going to translate it for me because I've, um, funny enough I've got it set to translate to Polish but the most important thing about this is that I can actually now listen to that story being read out. Sure, here is a story about moving to Spain and working as an English teacher that includes the words you provided. Sophie had always dreamed of living abroad and when she graduated from university with a degree in English she knew that her chance had finally arrived. She had always been fascinated by the... So this is something you could do really easy. Just take a story if you're as a language learner working on your own and obviously you want to hear the pronunciation of the language. I'm just showing you one tool. There are actually better tools than this, but I'm showing you this one because obviously it's one of the most obvious tools that you can use, which is Google Translate. And for me, it's fine, but there are more sophisticated uh, tools that will change text into audio. Incidentally, if you are interested in Google Translate and you want to learn more about how you can use that in language learning, I've put a video on the screen now that will take you through some ideas of how you combine using Google Translate with YouTube transcripts uh, and how I can use that for studying languages. Just a super quick break from the video. I hope you're enjoying what you're seeing and if you are, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads of free videos on the website. There's a menu system here at the top, but also loads of content on the opening page. And at the bottom of the page, there's also my blog. If you really want to follow my work, the best thing to do is to sign up to the newsletter. You'll get updated with all the latest blog posts, the latest videos, the latest online courses and the free webinars that I often run. And I will be running a couple in about using ChatGPT over the next few months. And also at the moment, if you sign up, there is a free 14 part video course in how to use technology in your teaching and learning. It's completely free, there are no tricks. I just send you one video every four or five days. Okay, let's get back to the video. I think this next example could be really interesting and this is something I've been doing quite a bit already. So what I've said is, in Polish we have a case which is a grammat kind of a grammatical structure called biernik. It is a grammatical structure that is common in Polish. Can you provide me with it 10 example sentences in Polish at level B1 that all have examples of the case biernik in them? 
And what I love about this is that it's actually given me all of those sentences and it's specifically pointed out which of the words is in Biernik as well. So this is really interesting for me to see this. Okay. So I'm gonna do a similar exercise then in English. I'm gonna ask um, ChatGPT to produce 10 sentences in the present perfect about the life of Joe Rogan, who's very, very popular on YouTube. Make these sentences for English learners at level A2. So we're gonna click on the button and hopefully it's gonna produce those sentences for me. And I can see it's already writing and I've got has been, I've got has hosted, has interviewed, has also been a commentator, has published. It's producing these sentences for me, for me really, really quickly. Now, one of the things I could do with this afterwards, of course, is turn that into some type of exercise, perhaps even make that a gap fill. Let's see, for example, if we can tell ChatGPT to turn this into a gap fill activity. So this is gonna be really interesting because I'm gonna to say to it, can you make the following 10 sentences into a close activity that focuses on getting the students to practice the present simple? So I'm gonna paste in that text now. So I'm just gonna paste it in, I'm gonna press enter, and let's see if it's capable of creating a close activity. And yes, it is, off it goes. And it even puts the word in brackets. <laughs> Unbelievable. So there we are, I've got an exercise already. I've even got the kind of guidance of the word that the students need to be in. I could have, of course, also have asked it to generate the answers for me. Let's just see if it will do that. Can you generate the answers to the activity above? In fact, we've already got those anyway, really, because above, but let's just see, okay? So let's see if, if it will give me the answers to those questions as well. Yes, it has, that's pretty handy as well. Amazing. So I want to show you a couple of examples now of how we can combine working with chat GPT and linking it to an online activity creator like Wordwall, which has got lots and lots of game activities. So what I've done here is I've asked a chat GPT to produce a biography about the life of Elvis Presley and include lots of irregular verbs because I want to practice some of the irregular verbs and I want the level to be only around A2. So this is what it's produced and it looks fine. I'm just going to grab this part. I won't even grab it all. I'll just take this part here just to demonstrate very quickly what I, I want to show you. So I'm going to copy the text. So control copy. I'm going to come over to Wordwall. Now, if you don't know Wordwall, I'm going to put a video on the screen now that will take you through everything that Wordwall can do. But one great thing about Wordwall is that it does create absolutely tons of activities. And I'm going to show you some examples of how we can combine these two together. So I'm going to click on missing word. I'm going to call this um, Elvis story okay and all I'm going to do is paste in that text that I've just copied and I'm going to click now on some of the words that I want to uh, make into the gaps in the activity so let's put use grew so click here then click on add let's just do a few let's do raised click on add do moved and we'll click on add and we'll do called and we'll click on add and we can say, mm, let's have a couple more. Let's do made, and we'll click on add, and we'll do combines, and we'll click on add. So these are the gaps. Now I won't do any more because I think you get the idea. I'm gonna come down below here now. I can put some trick words in if I want to make the activity more difficult, but I'm gonna click on done. And that activity should be created now. Now I can share this activity with the students by clicking on set assignment, and then just simply asking for the students to put their name, click on start, and then sharing this link, and the students could do the activity. Or I can even give them the option of just using their telephones and they can take the picture and scan it and then do the activity on their phones if it's in the classroom. But let's have a quick look at the activity. So as you can see now, we've got this text in, in about Elvis Presley, and I would have to then drag the words in and obviously, once I finished, I would click on Submit Answers and it would tell me if I got the answers wrong or right. So I'm gonna show you another example here. Uh, I've asked it to generate eight sentences about cooking at B1 level using the following 10 words, recipe, fry, spices, fresh, boil, ingredients, roast, 
Asian cuisine. So let's see if it produces those eight sentences for me. So hopefully off it goes and it's gonna produce those sentences. And you can see it's already producing the sentences for me. Now what I'm gonna do is now turn this into an exercise in word wall, but I'm gonna use a different type. Well, we're gonna do a similar type of exercise, but I'm gonna use it in a very different way. So I'm gonna copy those sentences and they've even numbered them for me, which is great. So just again, control copy. I'm gonna jump over to word wall. Now we've got create activity. And what I'm gonna do for this particular one is I'm, um, in fact, we could, there's lots of things I could do. I could create the unjumble exercise. So the students had to unjumble the sentences and put them in uh, order. But I'm actually gonna go back to missing word and use missing word in a slightly different way. I'm gonna paste all those sentences in. I've noticed actually it didn't pick up the numbers. I might decide I wanna add the numbers in myself because the numbers would be quite useful. Just makes it a little bit easier. Let me just stop the video a minute. Now what I would do is just click on the words that I wanted to practice. So recipe, Asian, really good. I've been doing this in Polish and it's worked really well for me as a way of kind of practicing the language. Um, and in fact, you can see it's even interesting because there are other words that it's produced in the sentences that would also be really useful for me. And I like the way that it's varied as well. Uh, in fact, we can't use ingredients twice, so we'll have to change that one. So we'll have to click on this one here. We'll take roasted, uh, we'll use spices here. We've got to make sure that each one has got, uh, let's try experimenting, let's put that one in there. Yeah, you can't have two words that are the same. You do need to make sure that each word is completely different. Okay, we'll just do a couple more. So let's do stir fry, that looks like a good one to add. And then one final one uh, would be, let's say flavor, and it's written it with the American spelling. Um, that's okay, I'll accept that, no problem. So now I just again create the click on, uh, done the activities created as I've already showed you how to um, access uh, the game you just click on share sorry very got that wrong click on a uh, set assignment and then click on uh, I normally ask for the student's name and then click on start and off you go let's just quickly look at the activity works in a slightly different way you've got the 10 or 8 sentences so it's not one text it's 8 sentences and you drag the words in now I've created that game very quickly, again, I did use missing word. Of course, I could have looked at other options. There are loads and loads of activities. I could have turned it into a crossword, uh, et cetera, et cetera, loads of different ways. But what I'm just trying to show is you how you can combine working with chat GPT and WordWall. So I've got some text here that I've written. It's my profile page. And what I'm gonna do is see if um, the system can actually improve what I've written and make it better. I think this would be a really interesting challenge. So I've pasted in the text and I've said, can you improve the following text for me? I'm gonna send it the text and let's see now if it can do a better job of uh, writing that. Uh, and immediately I can see some improvements. I love that word there, highly decorated. <laughs> I'm not sure that if that's appropriate, but it's very interesting that it will even take my own English and suggest improvements for me. So in other words, I could be using this as an interesting way of, or not an interesting, but necessarily as a way of improving uh, text that I've written, perhaps in my courses, etc. Now I'm gonna stop here. There are many, many more examples of things that I've been trying out, testing, some that have worked, some that haven't. I'm just gonna go for a few, and I'm also gonna put a link on the screen so that if you wanna sign up and use it, I'm gonna give you a link to the video that I used to actually sign up to um, uh, chat GPT in case you want to test it out. It's a little bit tricky to sign up. But a couple of other things that I've done is I've literally just had a conversation and started to ask chat GPT questions. <laughs> a few odd examples. I didn't know much about the background of Keir Starmer, the present Labour uh, leader in the UK. So I just did, I just interviewed the system to find out about his background and I found that he was a lawyer and that he was involved a lot in human rights campaigns, etc, etc. So that was an interesting activity. I've also used it, for example, to ask questions about grammar in Polish and to clarify certain things that I didn't understand. I've also used it, for example, to find out a little bit about places. I was even asking it to give me some information about the area that I currently live in in Poland, uh, as I'm spending some time in Poland at the moment, and that was very in interesting. 
I've also seen it write a lesson plan for a teacher. So this teacher produced loads of material using the system and then says, now can you build a lesson plan for me based on that? Now I haven't done that myself, but I did see that in a presentation that I was watching. One other thing I saw in a presentation that looked very good in fact, was that a university professor took a large piece of written work from a student, pasted it into the system and then asked the system to give feedback to to the professor on the quality of the essay, blah, blah, blah. Now, it was quite interesting because the prof professor was very impressed with the feedback that was provided and felt that it was very useful. I'm presuming, and I can't remember exactly, that obviously the professor told the system a lot about what type of feedback it wanted. Another thing that I've done is just ask it to create dialogues. So for example, um, I'll give an example of one I did the other day was simply ask it to create a dialogue between two people who are having a discussion about healthy eating. One of them is a meat eater and one of them is a radical vegetarian. And it was really interesting the type of dialogue it produced. I think you can go on and on and on with this technology. There are so many possibilities. I really hope you've liked this video. If you have, there's a link on the screen now to the video that I used to learn how to sign up to this system and start to put it to the test. I will be doing more videos on this particular topic and I'll just finish with a reminder of where you can follow my work. Please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com, loads more free videos. Um, you can sign up to my newsletter on the front page, as I've said, if you do, there is a 14 part free step-by-step -step course in using technology in education. And you'll also get updated with all the latest blog posts, the online courses, the free webinars that we run, including we'll be doing a few on ChatGPT and also my blog posts, etc. You can find out about my courses here on the front page and also you can contact me if you would like me to do some training with your organization. I'm gonna put a few more videos on the screen that you might find interesting now and thank you very much for sticking right on to the end of the video.